In a show like Doctor Who, there are plenty of ideas that never make it to the screen. Kate Stewart and Unit featured in early drafts of Flatline, for instance, and the Master wasn't always part of Spyfall. Some ideas get further and are cut after being filmed, and while not every deleted scene has made it into the public domain, some of the ones that have deserve to make it past the editor. I'm Ellie with Who Culture, here with 10 Doctor Who deleted scenes that should have been left in. Number 10. You get one detour. Daleks in Manhattan. Martha Jones doesn't really become a fully fledged companion until well into series 3. For the first six episodes, she's just a temporary TARDIS traveller. But it is easy to forget this, and that might be because a crucial scene was cut. At the end of Smith and Jones, the Doctor offers Martha a single trip. At the start of Gridlock, he stretches that definition to include a trip to the past and a trip to the future, before returning her home in the Lazarus experiment. But first, Martha gets another trip back in time to 1920s New York. Well, how come? Originally, an explanation was given on screen, in the form of a TARDIS interior scene cut from the start of Daleks in Manhattan. This lasts for almost two minutes and sees Martha coaxing the Doctor into taking a cheeky detour. The scene was cut for two reasons, for time, and because it was felt that the episode had two openings, the TARDIS scene and the scene outside the Statue of Liberty. With the TARDIS scene being less integral to the narrative, it was the one that had to go. Structurally, the episode probably works better for it, but it's a scene that really should exist in some form, given how important it is to Martha's journey. It would be a neat addition to the story should it ever get novelised, for example. Number 9. You don't like Christmas, the time of the Doctor. Frustratingly few deleted scenes have been released from the 11th Doctor's era, but we do have a short clip from his final story to enjoy. The scene in question comes from the beginning of the episode and takes place outside Clara's block of flats, which, fun facts was one of the locations used for Rose Tyler's home at the Powell estate. It bridges the gap between Clara's reunion with her boyfriend in the TARDIS and the moment she introduces him to her family. On the surface, it's pretty superfluous, offering nothing more than a few extra jokes about Clara's Christmas dinner and the Doctor being naked. But on closer inspection, this scene has lots going for it. For one thing, it contains the only reference to Christmas crackers in the first half of the story, laying the groundwork for the role they'll play in the third act. It also features some pretty impressive directorial flourishes, such as the unusually low opening shot which frames Matt Smith's sonic screwdriver flick against the sunny skies. It's a lovely moment between the 11th Doctor and Clara, given how little time they spend together during the rest of the story, and how short their time in the TARDIS was overall, we can't help but wish that this scene had been left in. Number 8. Chameleon Cameo – The Awakening Touted as the next big thing by producer John Nathan Turner, robotic companion Chameleon was swiftly exiled to the TARDIS following his debut. The prop's unreliability made it pretty much impossible to incorporate Chameleon into most stories. However, plans were afoot to briefly include him in an additional serial, namely Season 21's The Awakening. This appearance was limited to one scene and involved very little movement, thus working around the prop's limitations. It saw a suspicious Tegan encounter Chameleon fiddling around with the ship's innards. To avoid rehiring original voice actor Gerald Flood, the tones of Peter Davison and Mark Strickson were used instead. This was accounted for by Chameleon's chameleonic tendencies. The moment added nothing to the plot overall, and so when The Awakening was found to be significantly overrunning, it was an easy bit to cut. This had the unfortunate side effect of completely removing Chameleon's contribution to the story, however. Whether you love him or loathe him, Chameleon deserved better, and this scene would have helped give him a bit more of a presence during his short time on the show. Number 7. Rickston Vaughn, Voyage of the Damned. Voyage of the Damned was, at the time, the longest episode of the revived series by far, clocking in at 71 minutes. The record has since been beaten by The End of Time Part 2, The Day of the Doctor, Deep Breath, and The Power of the Doctor. Even so, the original edit was still deemed to be too long, and various cuts had to be made. One of the most puzzling omissions concerns Rickston Slade and his phone-like device, which was creatively named a Vaughn. When we first see Slade, he's used using his phone to instruct an unseen lackey. As a result, attentive viewers might have wondered why he didn't try to call for help when the ship was wrecked in a meteor shower. Originally, this question was accounted for, with Slade remarking to the other survivors that his phone was no longer working, and the Doctor deducing that they therefore have no chance of sending an SOS. Speaking on the Series 4 DVD and Blu-ray box set, Russell T. Davis explained that those lines made the scene too complicated, but admitted that for the sake of clarity, they perhaps should 
have remained. And given how short the cut sequences were, less than 30 seconds combined, we can't help but agree. Number 6. Tenth Planet Reconstruction – Twice Upon a Time Twice Upon a Time is another one of those episodes that was notoriously over length. Reportedly, the first edit ran for 90 minutes. It was longer than Dunkirk, Stephen Moffat recalled in one interview, and I mean the historical event, not the movie. Most of his missing material is yet to surface, though some of it was reinstated in Paul Cornell's 2018 novelisation of the story. Furthermore, the story's director, Rachel Talalay, has since reassured fans that nothing major was lost. Um, there's one case that we beg to differ, however. The episode opens with a thrilling recap of the first Doctor's final story, The Tenth Planet, combining archive footage and newly shot material. As broadcast, this sequence features a mere handful of new shots, but as the accompanying episode of Doctor Who Extra revealed, much more of the story was reenacted than what we saw on screen. Most tantalisingly of all, the revamped Mondasian Cybermen costumes from World Enough in Time and The Doctor Falls were pressed back into service, allowing the team to restage some of the Tenth Planet's action pieces on a 21st century budget. Sure, the montage as it stands is tighter and gets to the action quicker, but would it really have hurt to include just a few more seconds of the reshot Tenth Planet? It would have made many a fan's Christmas. Number 5. Far more than just another Time Lord – Remembrance of the Daleks As is now common knowledge, Seventh Doctor script editor Andrew Cartmel made it his mission to bring more mystery to the Doctor via the so-called Cartmel Master Plan. This would have revealed the Doctor to be a reincarnation of a being known as the Other, who, together with Rassilon and Amiga, played a vital role in the formation of Time Lord society. It would, in effect, have given him godlike status. The plan could never be fully realised due to the show's untimely cancellation in 1989, but various seeds were planted in the final stories of the show's original run, hinting that there was more to the Doctor than meets the eye. Most notorious of all is a line from Remembrance of the Daleks that ended up on the cutting room floor, with the Doctor explicitly referring to himself as far more than just another Time Lord. It's a line that's gained such iconic status that you'd be forgiven for thinking it did appear on television. But alas, it did not, reportedly because producer John Nathan Turner was concerned about its religious connotations. It absolutely should have remained in. Number 4. Cyber Surprise – Journey's End The end of series cliffhanger became a staple of the first RTD era, with almost every finale leading into that year's Christmas special. Parting of the Ways had the Tenth Doctor's debut, Doomsday had Donna Noble's surprise appearance, Last of the Time Lords had the Space Titanic, and Journey's End had a soaking wet Doctor stripped down, just to his shirt mind you, and mope around the TARDIS. But this wasn't always the way. In fact, as written and filmed, the episode's closing scene saw the Doctor Inspector reading on the TARDIS scanner while failing to notice two Cybermen creeping up behind him. What? This scene would have led directly into the next Doctor, with the brief appearance of the Cybermen explained as them falling through the vortex. As documented in the writer's tale, Russell T Davis felt that it was important to end the series on an upbeat note. But Doctor Who magazine writer Benjamin Cook thought that this cyber scene detracted from the tragic end to Donna's story, and on reflection, RTD agreed with him. Personally, I also agree. So consequently, the cliffhanger was abandoned, and a new ending was shot many weeks later during production of The Next Doctor. RTD has since admitted that part of me thinks we should have done this, and it's not hard to see why. After all, who doesn't love a good what? 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 Number 3. Clara's Theme – The Pilot The Twelfth Doctor's guitar featured prominently across Series 9, but was mostly absent from Series 10, save for cameos in The Pyramid at the End of the World and Twice Upon a Time. It also made an off-camera appearance in Series Opener The Pilot, with the Doctor knocking out a few bars of Beethoven's Fifth, but originally, it was set to make a much more substantial appearance in the episode. During the montage that makes up the Doctor's It Means Life lecture, we see Bill and Heather bump into each other in the student bar. As scripted, this was part of a longer sequence, which saw the Doctor also present playing his guitar in the background. This led into another deleted scene where Bill asked the Doctor what he was playing. I forget, he tells her. However, to any eagle-eared fan, the tune is instantly recognisable as Clara's theme. This sequence was likely cut to make the Doctor's lecture and the episode as a whole more punchy, but it absolutely should have been included. It would have given the Doctor another chance to show off his guitar playing while simultaneously playing tribute to Clara Oswald. I mean, what's not to love? Unless you're not a fan of Clara, in which case, just appreciate Murray Gold's 
music? Number 2. Old Agatha, the Unicorn and the Wasp Sometimes, in spite of everything, whole subplots end up on the cutting room floor. This is one of those cases, and by far the biggest cut on this list. Originally, the Unicorn and the Wasp was framed with scenes of an old Agatha Christie on her deathbed, a narrative device the woman herself would no doubt have approved of. The first of these sees Christie recalling her encounter with the Doctor, but struggling to remember the details. I've written so many mysteries, she tells her nurse. Before I die, I have to solve mine. At the episode's end, things come full circle, with the Doctor and Donna returning to tell her the truth. These scenes appear on the Series 4 DVD and Blu-ray, with RTD recalling that they read very well on the page, but didn't work so well in the edit, making the story feel like it was taking place in the past tense. It's hard to argue with this reasoning, but it's a shame that they couldn't have been included somehow, perhaps as a pre prequel or a minisode. Deleted scenes featuring actors and sets otherwise absent from a whole story are always the most tantalising, don't you think? Number 1. Plague Doctor, The Woman Who Lived In The Woman Who Lived, a shielder is reunited with the Doctor 800 years after they first met. But all is not well. A shielder has come to feel trapped by her life of immortality, imploring the Doctor to take her with him. And after reading her diaries, specifically an entry about the devastating loss of her children during the plague, he begins to understand why. What you might not have realised is that the Doctor already knew about this tragic chapter of a Shilder's life, because he was actually there. This deleted cutaway shows a Shilder passing a plague doctor in the street. The figure remains silent, watching a Shilder as she goes before removing their mask, to reveal themselves as none other than the Doctor, looking much more bedraggled than usual. There are multiple reasons why this scene should have been left in. For starters, it adds more depth to a Shilder's story, and shows us a lesser seen side of the Doctor too. It would have also allowed us to add another costume variant to the Twelfth Doctor's already substantial wardrobe, and one-off costumes are always the most exciting. Well, that's everything for this list, but fear not. There are plenty of other deleted scenes from Doctor Who, so why not check out 10 Doctor Who deleted scenes you need to see. In the meantime, I've been Ellie with Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.